Hi there! In this video, I will explain how to manipulate your robot designed right here by Robocam is supposed to work and operate. Now, this is part three of the entire manipulator lesson. So if you want to create this robot at home by yourself, make sure you check out all the other parts too. Now, if you want to complete this lesson stage with me, uh, all you need is basically your manipulator robot, which looks just like this one you see standing right here in front of me. Now, I want you to have your robot somewhere near you too, in front of you, right next to you, so that as I explain individual parts, mechanisms, electronics of this robot, you will be able to take a quick glance at your robot and thus understand how your robot is supposed to work. This is a crucial stage before we get to programming, because this way you will actually know which parts you need to program and how to achieve a desired result. If you are a teacher or if you're interested in teaching robotics and programming to kids, remember that all the instructions you see behind me can be available to you and your students too. For more information about this, check out the description to this video or go straight to our website at robocamp.eu. And now, Let's check out all the interesting things about this robot. Let's start with the general overview of this robot. What's the objective? Well, the spike manipulator was designed to be able to detect and move an object from one place to another. Now, this robot manipulator is fully autonomous, or rather, it will be once we finish programming it. Now, everything will be controlled by a program stored in the hub, or rather, in the memory of the hub. Now, this robot can rotate, okay? It can also tilt to the front and back, and most interestingly, it can grab object with its yellow claws. Now, right here at the bottom, we have the platform. Now, the platform is very visible, but it's also quite useful for this particular robot. You see, it helps the robot operate efficiently since those two stands you see here, stands for the object to be moved around are within reach of the gripper. So it's quite important. Speaking of the platform, this one is made out of two plates. This means that we have quite a lot of space for the manipulator. Now, here, those black elements are the stands. The stands for an object to be carried. Now, this robot will actually be programmed to move, sorry about that, to move this object from one stand to the other. Now, but it cannot be just any object, you see. This one meets all the requirements needed for this robot. That is, first of all, the object has to be large enough for the distance sensor to detect it. Remember, we have a distance sensor right here. And it must also be able to be placed right in the center of the stand. Next, let's talk electronics. And the manipulator robot, we have as many as five electronic elements, each responsible for something else. Let's start maybe with, well, the most important one for any robot. Let's start with the hub. It's right here on top, and this is the element responsible for controlling and powering all the other electronic elements connected to it. As you can see, we have quite a lot to power. We also have three motors in this construction. 
Maybe let's start with this one, the small motor on my right, right here. Now this medium motor is actually responsible for lifting and lowering the object by tilting the robot up and down. Now this medium motor on the other side is very important because this is the motor which controls the gripper, the claws that we have right here. Now finally we also have the large motor which is quite different, which is quite difficult for me to show you right now. So instead I want you to take a look at this had this graphic behind me, okay? The large motor at the bottom is responsible for yet another task, which is rotating the entire construction uh, from here to there, so that the robot is actually able to move this object from one place to another. Now, finally, we have a distance sensor right here in front. This one I can actually try to show you right here. Okay, this is the distance sensor and this will help this robot detect whether the object is standing on the sand or is it empty. Now let's see how the robot will look like when it is actually rotating, that is turning from one stand to the other. Oh, you can see it on the animation right here and as you can see I'm not doing the same right now with my robot. That is because, well, the hub is not activated and the motors are not working yet. So if I were to force this movement right now, well actually this is a good way to get your uh, motors damaged quickly so I avoid that when I can and I advise the same to you. So instead Let's take a look at the cross section, okay, to see how those mechanisms actually operate. Now here you can see exactly how this happens. You can see those two gears, remember one of them we affixed firmly to the platform, the larger one marked here with number one. This one does not move, but the smaller gear certainly does. It's powered by the large motor and thanks to this movement, thanks to this uh, movement of the large motor and the smaller gear, the entire robot turns as well. Now on this animation you can see exactly how the robot will be tilted forward and back again. Now this once again is not a magical movement at all. This is made possible thanks to this motor, medium motor you see on the side. Now let me make this even more apparent for you by switching to this cross section here. Now first of all you can see that this upper part of the robot right here with the hub and the motors, it's actually installed on this um, kind of a hinge, a special hinge designed for this robot marked right here with number one. And the number two is of course uh, this part, this beam, uh, which actually allows to control whether the robot is straightened up or is tilted down, okay? You can see it on the side of your robot very easily too. It's right here. Finally, we have the most interesting mechanism of the manipulator, that is the yellow gripper. It's of course right here in front. Now it consists of two clasping arms and notice that at the end there are also rubber bands. Now they help this robot to grasp an object and make sure that it doesn't fall off while it is being transported. Now I hope you remember that the movement of this part is controlled by one of the medium motors, the one right here, okay, on my left side and the robot's right 
side. Now, I know that this movement of this gripper looks pretty neat from the outside, but to really understand this movement, how it happens, we need to take a look inside the robot. Right here, right now, you can see how this movement, well, actually happens. Let's start with this small, small gear marked here as number one. This gear, or actually the small axle on which it is located, is connected directly to the medium motor. So this means that whenever this motor moves, the gear moves two. Now this small gear on the other hand is connected to the rack marked as number two, very long one too. Now this is where this rotating motion turns into back and forth motion of the rack. Now then this movement is transferred to the handles attached to the rack here you can see them marked as number three. Now, once again, this movement is transferred further to those arms of the gripper themselves, okay? And notice what happens here. Those arms actually tighten or part, depending on the direction, depending on the position of the rack and also on the direction of motor rotation. Now that you know so much more about different mechanisms and parts of the manipulator robot, now that you understand how it is supposed to work, you are ready to proceed to the next stage of the lesson, where together we will create a program for the manipulator robot. If you enjoyed this stage of the lesson, leave us a thumbs up. And if you are interested in more robotics lesson like this one, check out the links in the description to this video. Thanks so much. And if you want to continue, I'll see you in the next video.